so to shift gears a little bit, so outside of the aerospace space and into more the realm of things on the ground. So once again, also going back into TIE 6-4, why is TIE 6-4 in particular such a popular material for applications within the human body? And what are these material properties that it has that makes it so biocompatible? I'll do a little bit of correcting too, is that commercially pure tie has a home in the body as well. So 6.4 is a higher strength by substantial margin, almost 2x over the pure titanium. And the tie 6.4 and CP tie, so commercially pure titanium or CP tie, share the same reason to be biocompatible. And a lot of it has to do with the, the oxide layer that's formed on the outside of the part. And so that's the same reason that it's titanium can be used in chemical plants too, is that unlike an iron or something that forms its oxide and then promptly sheds it, right? Rust is a terrible oxide. Titanium holds on to its oxide viciously. So TiO2 is, is a very, very stable compound. It's adhered really, really well to the surface to the point where that's, that's what makes you biocompatible and, and chemically compatible is that you're actually butting up against what amounts to a ceramic, right? It's TiO2 as opposed to a, a metal material. So the, the chemistry of TiO2 versus a huge number of acids is really, really safe, never mind the, what amounts to a relatively benign environment inside of your body. So when you think about etching titanium, the etchant for titanium, if you were to do it in a lab, contains hydrofluoric acid, nitric acid, and I think just distilled water was something to, to fill the gap, right? So a substantial amount of that etchant is hydrofluoric acid, probably going to stand up to maybe non-stomach parts of your body okay. If we're relying ever so slightly to eat away the surface of titanium with hydrofluoric acid, the, the statement remains that you can use it in your body with relatively you know, little risk. Part of the other bit is that when you look at the alloying elements in titanium, so the aluminum and the vanadium, aluminum is not like one that you want floating around a lot, but when you look at the prior history of what we used to put into our body. So a couple of the first implants were, you know, 316 stainless or cobalt chromoly. You start to get some things that have nickel inside of them. And a lot of people have allergic reactions to nickel. So the composition of TIE 64 is actually amenable in its own right, for the most part, to be biocompatible. And then you have the addition of that oxide layer on the surface that prevents further attack by the juices, essentially, that are flowing through your body any given time. Now, that being said, uh, titanium is not great in applications where, you know, it rubs on itself. It likes to give off particles. So when you see things like hip cups or knee implants or some applications like that, you'll never see a, a metal on metal joint. And besides the fact that it just sounds painful, one of the things that you definitely want to avoid is having titanium rub on itself or another hard material because it's quite poor in wear applications. So you will see titanium a lot in static situations. So things like cranial implants or implants that are going into your spine where they're going to fuse bone around that anyway, or you know, like the hip cup where it, it's put into your the acetabular cup part of your pelvis and then the bone grows into it. It's not going anywhere either. So you'll see a lot of applications where the motive or the motion half of the hip application is, is not titanium or your knee, for instance, because of the fact that it's in bad and wear applications. So you either need to be cognizant of what's touching what or put like a, a load bearing polymer in there to kind of lubricate the joint as cartilage might have once back in the day. So you mentioned, you know, hip cups is one of the current applications with titanium. What other applications are involved with titanium and the human body right now? And also, what do you envision TIE 6 for other titanium alloys used in the human body in the future? In terms of what we're presently using for, and I can talk specifically about some of GE Additive's customers, are things like spinal implants, cranial implants. To, to go on a tangent, and I'll get back to your, your question, Puneet, about oh, where we're using it, is part of the beauty about additive period, titanium or not, is that you could make a patient-specific implant. So let's just mm -hmm. say you go in for uh, an MRI or a CT scan or something because, not to be gruesome, but you got in a bad car accident and part of your skull is missing or, you know, needs to bits and pieces or something like that. And so instead of typically what would be done is you'd go get this one-size-fits-most piece of sheet titanium off the shelf and then your surgeon would do something to make it fit you and then screw it into what's left, right? So instead, if you have a couple of days to spare, you take 
your digital data, which amounts to your CT scan or MRI, and you can make an implant that literally fits you and only you for your injury and only your injury. So again, regardless of the fact that it's titanium or not, you can print perhaps in the you know, the surgical center of additive excellence at some hospital someplace. And that could be, you know, depowdered and put into you within 18 hours, you know, 24 to a couple of days. You could see this world where additive fits this patient specific model really, really nicely because it's just a file, right? You don't need to make new tooling for it. It doesn't need to go through a complicated manufacturing cycle. It's it have a, an engineer and doctors that can input this data essentially and put it through some post-processing and you get your part out. And then that's made available for implanting into you as, as a person and again only you as a person so it is a cool application of a micro factory is every additive machine to continue down the titanium route i don't know that there's anything that we haven't as a humanity right thought about replacing with titanium that we haven't already so there's piece portions of rib cages portions of heads spines knee hip implants but all the plates and screws and stuff, if you ever have a bad break or something like that, can be titanium, sometimes stainless as well. I'd say everything that we probably want to do with titanium has been tried, or has been done regularly or with any degree of frequency. I, I can't say exactly, but we will you know, continue to push the limits of healing people with whichever means necessary. And the biocompatibility of titanium is a huge fit for that. That's really cool because I actually read an article and it was from the Oregon Health and Science University. They basically designed a durable artificial heart that uses titanium for the two ventricles. And the way it works is one titanium tube actually contains a hollow rod that's coated in a titanium alloy. I'm not sure which okay. one. And that shuffles back and forth between the tube. And so kind of that- So it's just forth. a mechanical valve that's using uh, exactly. a solid material. When we were talking about the oxide layer on titanium, it's good at what it does. There are other layers you can put onto titanium. So a very famous one is titanium nitride. Uh, so if you've ever walked into a Lozer Home Depot and you see these drill bits on the shelf and they say, these are made of titanium, and you're like, hmm, probably not. Uh, what they are <laughs> is they, they, they have a titanium nitride coating on them. And it's crazy, crazy hard material. It's super scratch resistant. It's going to, you know, win the day against wood and aluminum and steel every day as us, you know, uh, Joe Schmoes are kind of doing stuff around our house to repair some things. So perhaps the thing that it might have been coated in was titanium nitride if it's a wear application. So that my statement from before, which is titanium uncoated is quite poor and wear, is turned on its head. It's actually the opposite if, if you nitride titanium because it becomes really, really hard and is actually phenomenal in wear application. So if you do have something sliding like that, and a coating like a titanium nitride would be super beneficial. So not only can you nitride a base of titanium, so if your bulk part was titanium, you could nitride that, but you can also deposit titanium nitride on other materials uh, and actually give it the coating. So you can have a, a what amounts to a composite material of, let's just say, a, an alloy steel coated in titanium nitride that has the, the benefits of the cheapness of alloy steel and perhaps the toughness of the core. And you get to your outside and you've got a super hard layer on it that's doing cool things with its environment.